Hey guys, um, last week I did a video on subwoofer gain and increasing your dynamics by turning up your gain a little bit. And one of the things I didn't uh, really cover is how I adjust the subs uh, to be balanced with the rest of the system. And that's what my video is going to be about today. And uh, by the way guys, let me know, I've got a, a new mic here, I'm actually using my uh, old Pose uh, headset. And so hopefully that sounds a little bit better, uh, but let me know how it sounds to you guys. Um, uh, it, to me, it, it sounds a little bit better, like you can hear me a little bit better. Um, but getting your subs uh, balanced uh, it can be a little bit tricky, and it can make even the best equipment sound a little bit off. And um, so this is just the system I use. This is how I do it. Um, and I'm going to assume that you've already run room correction, and uh, and that gets the balance pretty close. But for me, it's never really 100% uh, to what I like. So, uh, but uh, you want to make sure that, you know, both subs are putting out the same dB and, you know, using pink noise or the test tones on your amplifier. Um, you know, most of the time room correction will already prompt you to do that. But if you've got like a, a, a point 0.1 receiver that only has one subwoofer output, then you'll probably have to use like an app or an actual SPL meter or something. Um, you can download SPL meter apps for free for your smartphone, but um, you know, obviously a, a, an actual SPL meter would be better, more accurate. But uh, and if you do, if it, if it's an option, uh, set it to C weighted. Um, but make sure that both subs are putting out you know the same dB. And uh, and I want to point out too that uh, having one subwoofer complicates the process, and so does having subwoofers that aren't truly flat in their response. And the reason I say that is uh, a single subwoofer causes dead spots and loud spots throughout the room. Okay, so uh, it'll be loud in one area, quiet in another. And so if you're trying to hear a, a song at a particular frequency and it's not, uh, you're not hearing it because you're in a dead spot at that particular fre frequency, you turn it up and then everything's just kind of out of whack, right? So that's an issue. Uh, a subwoofer that's not truly flat, if you're trying to listen to a song that's really deep and you're trying to adjust your sub for that, then it's going to be really loud in the upper frequencies. So most subs, they start out at 60 hertz real loud and then they start trailing off and dropping off. So if you're trying to adjust a sub at say 30 hertz or 35 hertz, then everything higher than that's going to be really loud. Whereas a sub that's nice and flat, you won't have that problem at all. It'll be nice and level and correct, at least in my opinion. Um, so anyway, uh, and one of the things I do for this process, and uh, just in general anyway, is I set the crossover at 90 hertz. And the reason I do that is because you get a bigger picture of the actual, uh, what the subwoofer is doing. Because if you set it, your, let's say you set your crossover at 60 hertz, well you can only hear down to 20 hertz. Okay, so that gives you an effective range that the subwoofer functions of 40 hertz. And that's not a very big window. If you set it to 90 hertz crossover and your speaker is set to small, uh, then your subs are going to be getting all of the signal on up to 90 hertz. And that gives you a bigger picture of what's going on and makes it a lot easier to adjust things uh, versus trying to adjust it at 60 or even worse, trying to adjust it at 40. Um, I couldn't imagine trying to adjust a sub at 40 hertz crossover with everything at 40 hertz because you've only got a 20 hertz window of what you can actually hear <laughs> and it's way easy to over adjust it uh, so that's one of the reasons i suggest setting it 90. and you can always go back if you don't like having it that high but i think it gives you a picture and of course if you run it higher because it makes sense uh, that's fine too but at least uh, 80 to 90 hertz is a good setting and um, so anyway uh, in uh, I'm sorry guys, I'm reading off a paper and it's just messing me up a little bit. It's different than I'm used to. Uh, but anyway, you set the subs to the recommended gain level. Okay, and that's going to vary from subwoofer manufacturer. And uh, even within SVS, uh, the difference between, uh, say, a, a PB2000 and these is different because these run on a different scale. So these, uh, if you've got the PB16 Ultras, uh, you probably want to start out uh, somewhere like negative 20 or negative 15 and kind of adjust from there. But most subs, it's about 50%, but there are some, some subs out there that are 15%, and they say not to turn it up beyond that. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, but again, most of the time, your room correction is going to take care of that. So uh, And so once I do that, then I set the uh, AVR subwoofer trim all the way down as low as it'll go. So negative 12, negative 14, as low as you can get that subwoofer trim to go. 
All right, and then I use a playlist, and that's why I've got this Spotify list up here. It's called a quick subwoofer demo, and that's on my uh, uh, Spotify account, so you guys can check that out. You can copy the list. Uh, you can just write down these songs, put them in your own uh, list. If you got your own, uh, some other source that you use, that's fine too. Uh, but these are just songs that I find particularly helpful. It kind of runs the gamut of music. And I use a lot of Nora Jones because it's clean. Uh, she's got good depth in her music. And to me, it, it's just easier to adjust to. Um, and honestly, uh, one thing that's not on here is Metallica. <laughs> I actually use uh, Metallica Lords of Summer quite a bit lately. It's been real easy for me. I just get it to where it's kicking just right but not overdone. I don't know why that is, but that's the one that's not on this list because they're not on Spotify. But you guys can check this out. Um, but anyway, so I'll, I'll turn up the volume to a good listening level so it's not too quiet because if it's too quiet, you can't really hear it. Uh, so I turn it up to a good listening level, and then I slowly turn up the subwoofer uh, AVR trim. And so, and you obviously, uh, you turn up both subs equally uh, as you go. Uh, but I turn it up until it just fills in the sound. All right, once, it, once the sound seems just filled in, I stop. Uh, to me, whether it's your ear or my ear, that's a good mark to shoot for. If you go beyond the point where it just feels filled in, you run the risk of overdriving it, which I think a lot of people have a, an issue uh, with doing from what I've heard and other people's, uh, you know, systems. So, uh, you know, just try and not overdo it. Of course, whatever you like is what you like and go for it. But that's just kind of my rule. And then once you get that level on a particular song, kind of go through each song and see if it still sounds right and just tinker with it, go up and down as needed. But once you find that little bass line, and then you can go through all the different songs and see if it sounds right. And again, I can't stress this enough. If you're, run, if you're not running duels uh, or if you're running subs that aren't flat and they, they're, they're peaky, this is going to make this process harder. Uh, so it's a lot harder to balance a sub that's not flat. So um, I know I, I harp on that, but it, it's really, it does make a big difference. Um, so anyway, uh, once I've got that set up and I, I've... I've you know, got it to where it just fills in the music. Then I take a look at the actual AVR trim. Now, if the AVR trim is in the positives, so if it's like plus 2.5 or, you know, plus three or, or even plus one, uh, at that point, uh, you may want to, or you might consider going back in, uh, increasing the gain on the subs, again, getting them matched, and then redoing the process. Uh, and, you know, because again, the higher you run the gain on your subs, the more dynamic the sound's going to be. Now, of course, if you're in an apartment and you're trying to keep it quieter for your neighbors, uh, that's not that big a deal. You don't want to run it too high because that can create issues. But, uh, you know, the lower you run the actual AVR trim and, and have it still balanced, uh, the more dynamic and the more powerful the bass is. Uh, but to me, still not sounding overdone. Uh, it, it's just, it's, I've said this before, it's almost like getting uh, an upgraded subwoofer just by increasing the gain and, and reducing the AVR subwoofer trim. So anyway, uh, and if your, your trim is, you know, like negative 11 or lower or, or completely bottomed out, then you might need to cut some gain back and repeat the process to try and get it. I mean, for me, I usually like to find it between negative six and negative 10. And that's just my sweet spot. That's where I'm happy with. And again, uh, this is all your stuff. So if you like it at whatever you like it at, that's perfectly fine too. This is just my thing. This is how I work it out. Um, but, uh, you know, you know, tastes are going to vary. Uh, I'd probably listen to my subs a little bit, uh, you know, heavy. Uh, but I'm guessing that's what most people like is to have their bass a little bit heavy versus what Odyssey or what other room correction might set it at. And again, the X2000 did a little bit better of a job. I'm sorry, the X6200 did a little bit better of a job than the X2000. The X2000, I had to turn up the, uh, the bass by about four or five dB compared to where they set it at. But uh, with 6200, it wasn't quite as much. I think it was like one or two dB on the AVR term. So not bad. Um, but anyway, that's just how I balance my subwoofers by ear. You'll hear me say that and when you balance the subs by ear this is how i mean how, what i'm talking about it's turning the avr trim all the way down and just slowly turning it up to where it's just filled in and uh, you know it may be exactly what odyssey sets it at uh, you can keep keep track of that and see if that's where you guys like it 
but I usually find I just like it a little bit heavier than that. And this is how I do it and still keep it balanced. So anyway, guys, if you found this video useful, uh, you can subscribe uh, and you can also support this channel by following my affiliate links. And so if you're looking to buy SVS products or anything on Amazon, you can just follow my links in the description uh, and purchase whatever you're looking for. Uh, but one of the things I want to point out is that you don't have to find the exact product in the link. Um, you know, like if you're looking for a PB1000, uh, you could follow the PB16 Ultra link and it would still count. So you don't have to go searching through my videos or my website to find the exact link you're looking for. It, it doesn't matter. Um, so long as you click it right before your purchase, that's what matters. Uh, so, it, you know, that I think that kind of helps because you don't have to go searching for it. And, uh, you know, and I put affiliate links in all of my video descriptions. So you guys, if you're, you know, think of it and you just bring it up, uh, you can go and, and just find the link down in the description and it'll be good. Um, and I use, you know, affiliate links because it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. I feel kind of weird just saying, hey guys, can you support me and send me some money? I, I don't know. It just doesn't, it feels weird to me, um, but affiliate links and stuff like that doesn't feel as weird. Uh, but, you know, and, and even if it's completely unrelated to the channel, like a chainsaw or something on Amazon, uh, that works too. <laughs> Every little bit helps, you know. Um, so anyway, uh, with all that said, you know, this channel is about helping you guys out. Um, yeah, every bit of revenue that I get goes back into the channel. So, you know, even if it's just helping cover the internet bill or, you know, streaming services or, you know, new gear to review, stuff like that. One of the things I've been doing is uh, I've been doing the old Netflix thing. And I've been doing that because uh, you can get Atmos and DTSX movies that way and actually get the format. Whereas if you watch it on Netflix or something like that through streaming services, you're not going to get those formats. So that's something I've been doing and I've been having fun. Um, I watched uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's like a Harry Potter thing. And I was actually surprised on the base on that one. So pretty cool. But uh, stay tuned. And, um, you know, one last tip I have is just keep messing with the settings. Keep adjusting. Keep tinkering with it. You know, I, I always try and tinker with the, the AVR to find just little tips and tricks to get just little sounding a little bit better. So it's worth doing. It's worth trying that out. Um, so anyway, guys, I really appreciate it. And, uh, uh, I appreciate all the support and the subscriptions. I just passed 3000 guys. I can't thank you enough. That's amazing. And, uh, you know, the likes and the comments and the subscriptions help just as much as, as the affiliate link stuff and all that. So I really appreciate it. Thanks again. And please subscribe.